Yep, we're good. Hi, today we're going to prep some 750 P3 cable, three quarter inch foam filled, P3 means foam filled. We're gonna prep it for an underground splice. So um, I'm gonna do it different on the different ends depending on uh, how you wanna do it. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do, this is kind of the older fashioned way usually if you're gonna prep it by hand not use a drill. So I'm going to come down about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, score the cable. And then I'm going to break it and pull the black jacket and the metal jacket off. Okay, then I'm going to take a utility knife, grab a utility knife, and I'm going to strip the outer jacket off so that we can get our cord to run down here. Some people, if you're real good, you can kind of score it around here. But if you do that, you just have to make very careful that you do not score the metal jacket. Otherwise, it can come apart just like we did there. Try not to get icky pick on your hands, but that's going to happen somewhat here. What's icky pick? It's the underground flooding gel. But the idea is if there's a nick in it, um, it'll stop water migration from the cable. Okay. okay. Then, without hitting the center conductor, I'm going to scrape away just enough of this dielectric so we can get the coring tool started. I felt I touched it there, we try not to. Okay, now I'm going to do this one by hand, so I'm going to take this one off of the drill. What tool are you using? This is a Cablematic. For this kind of cable, probably the Cablematic's the best one. And you can identify the 750 by the green insert. I'm using a Cablematic coring tool for 750 P3. The three quarter inch or 750 MC squared um, that has uh, fused disc plastic dielectric, takes a different tool, different connectors, completely different equipment. Okay, so we run this down, it strips out the, the foam dielectric, and then you want to run it down far enough that you start seeing a nice, if you want to come in here close, you start seeing a nice beveled edge on the edge of the cable, and you'll see the, the metal start coming off. And you want to kind of ease up on the pressure at the end so it stays nice and round. Okay, pull that off. Now, normally you would use a a plastic clothespin kind of thing to peel this off. We don't have that at the moment, so we're going to use a knife. Now, we don't want to go like this with the knife because that'll dig into the copper. You really don't want to use a knife at all, but if you don't have a gator, then you can use a knife to scrape the dielectric off. And you want to make sure you get it all off nice and shiny so it makes a good connection. I have taken some apart and that's been the it didn't work and that's been the problem is there was still dielectric on it. So in your connector there's little jaws that clamp onto there and if you got dielectric in there it won't make a good connection. So So this is the straight splice that we would use in an underground repair. Put the back nut on. Put the second nut on. And that should be sticking out just a little bit. That would work, but it's a little bit big. Now, before you put all this together, the back nut, you wanna get started a couple threads. 
no more than that, but you want to have it where the threads are started because when you tight, if you tighten these two down first, you'll never get the back nut started. So you got to get it started, but not. And if you tighten it too much, it won't turn on here because the back nut clamps the cable, the second nut clamps the center connector. So let me trim this down just a little bit. Yep. So just sticking out, kind of looks like an RG6 connector, just sticking out like maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now we're gonna put this onto the splice. We do not turn this piece, because if we turn this piece, it'll end up grabbing the center conductor, twisting it, and either completely breaking it and not working or having distortions. So this stays, this stays put, and we run this nut up here. We'll keep this started. Let me grab our big wrenches. And tighten her down good. A little bigger. Tighten her down good. Okay. Now run your back nut up on there. And tighten that one down good. Okay. All right, on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're going to do it with the drill. A little different method. You have to be... Now in an underground repair, you're not gonna have a lot of cable to play with. So if you're gonna do it this way, you have to be very careful that you don't grab the center conductor and it go wrong on you, otherwise you're, you're digging back a lot farther. So. too much of this hanging off because then it'll be hard for the shrink to, to shrink onto there. Okay. So hopefully that's enough. If not, we will put her back some more. So this time you notice the operation went just a little bit different. Instead of scoring this and bring and cutting off the edge of that metal. I'm just going to leave it flush, cut flush there. And we're going to try and let the drill and the tool do the work. But you got to be very careful to not hit the center conductor on this and grab it and twist it. And again, when you get to about the point you're stopping, just back off on the pressure so the edge of this ends up pretty round. And again, we're gonna clean our dielectric off.
remember, keep in mind the minimum bending radius of the cable. If you bend it too far, you'll kink it, and then, and then you'll be doing this all over. And 750 is one of the harder cables to work with. It's almost like trying to bend conduit. on, we measure our center conductor, trim it down, okay. so we're ready to go there. Now this is for an underground repair. If this was aerial, these are outside rated connectors, they're o-ringed, they're considered waterproof, but they're not considered waterproof for underground. What you want to have is a good 12 inches beyond your bare cable. So, go about there to here. So in this case, it's, it's about a half a stick of shrink tube. A little more than half a stick. And probably the most common thing, I can't tell you many times I've done it, and that's forget to put the shrink tube on, put your connectors together, and then you gotta take it apart and put the shrink tube on. Remember it ahead of time, it's very helpful. So again, we've got our back nut started a little bit, line it up. If you feel it's starting to cross thread, back off and start it again. These connectors can cross thread on you. Get our wrenches. Tighten it as tight as you can. Then the back nut. Yeah, okay. Nice and tight. Center your shrink boot on here. So we feel where the connector is. We got about 12 inches after the bare cable. And then just be careful when you're shrinking. We don't want to burn holes in it. You got to start over. Um, if it's raining out, the water will cause blisters in it. So try to make a little tent, paper towels, rags, dry it off. Water will impair the ability for it to start in the middle, work your way out. Kind of work your way around. Don't stay in one spot too long. You'll burn a hole in it. Yep, then usually you'll see a little goo come out the back. That's a nice good seal. And you might have noticed on the other piece I did. Once you get started here, I mean it doesn't matter if you get this really hot, but then when you start working down the cable, if you can get an angle where you're really heating the boot and not the cable. Because you can't overheat this and it'll It'll come apart. The blackjack will be cable itself.
Usually that last little piece will curl back over if we didn't. But I think we got a good, I think we got a good solid seal here. So there's a, a perfectly done underground shrink job. If, if you have, ever, I've never dug up a properly made look like this underground splice. A lot of people say, oh, I hate those underground splices. They always go bad. Every single one I've dug up has either not had shrink boot covering the bare cable or just past it. You'll never dig one up that's, that's sealed up this good. So that's it. That's a take.